Should you make art that sells or should you make landscapes in a certain style or medium because that is what everyone else seems to be selling right now and it's working? Or should you adapt your work and change it so that it sells because right now you're not selling? There are so many opinions on whether you should make art that sells, whether it should be commercial, whether you should not do it. I've heard people say your work is too commercial, it's not commercial enough. So this is what I want to talk about in today's episode, what commercial art means and what we can do to adapt our work to make it more sellable. So let me start by talking about what commercial art is. Now, there's a real clear definition of commercial art, which is really black and white and easy to understand. And that is, there is a certain type of art that is created with commercial output in mind, meaning that the reason that we are creating this artwork is because we want to sell it or advertise something. So it might be selling a product, it might be selling a service, an idea, it could be something that's going on the front of a magazine to try and attract people to buy that magazine. It might be like I used to work in a design team and we would buy designs and work with designers to create designs on cushions that we wanted to sell and we wanted to sell mass. So we wanted to sell lots of these. So we were making and creating designs that we knew would sell. So that's a kind of creative art, logo design, website design, marketing, that type of art we are making with the purpose of advertising or selling or promoting. That's the end goal. And so that is one bucket of commercial art. The opposite of that, and you might have heard this phrase, is fine art. So on the scale, fine art and commercial art, usually, but there's a gray area, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but we're thinking black and white for now. Fine art is the opposite end of the scale in the traditional sense of somebody creating art with no desire or they might desire to sell it, but the reason they're making it is personal self-expression, emotional, and that is the intent of the artwork. And so the artwork isn't created with the mind of, I want to sell this product, or I want to sell this service, or this is going to go on a cushion, or it's purely the artist expressing a vision or emotion. So there's the black and white (laughs) kind of perceptions of what they are. And of course, there's gray areas in this because you can have a fine artist who is maybe not intending to to commercially sell on cushions and things like that, but they want to sell their artwork, but they're still making it from a place of self-expression, but they are geared up towards selling it. And so this is what I want to talk about now because this is important for us all to understand in that there are ways that you can be that commercial artist and make to sell. And then for me, there's another bucket and these are just my opinions now. We've all got different opinions on this. But my opinion is that there is, a, there is this gray area in the middle of fine art and commercial art, somewhere in the middle, where the artwork is then called accessible. So for me, there are different types of fine art or art in any capacity that is heading towards commercial because the definition of commercial is selling. So if something is selling, it becomes commercial. That's what that term is. And so there are certain types of artwork that start to head towards being more commercial because they're more accessible. And what I mean by that is both visually or emotionally, artworks that are more accessible can sometimes be labeled as being more commercial. So let's just take a floral piece. We look at a piece of artwork that is someone holding a bouquet of flowers. 
And it's easy for us to interpret what that is without us having any art knowledge or knowledge of reading an artwork. We know that, that is somebody holding a bunch of flowers. And we then might relate that to times that we've held a bunch of flowers or why flowers are important. And so we start to relate and we start to see ourselves in that. Um, and so that then becomes more accessible. And pet portraits, for example, are accessible. We know we see a dog and we know it's a dog. <laughs> and so someone looking at that artwork can easily read that artwork. I know that's a dog. It reminds me of my dog. And so on this scale then of, of fine art and, and, and commercial, you can see how some artworks then start to edge towards being accessible, which means people are likely to buy them because I understand them. So some artworks that go out into mass retailers are accessible. So they're made to look like fine art pieces. And sometimes you'll notice I've noticed this when I've gone to particular mass produced retailers that are selling huge canvases that look like they've been painted and they are all of a certain type of subject matter in a particular style, you know, they're kind of like expressive and that's because they're accessible and they're tapping into a market, a mass market of people that want to own artwork, they don't know the steps maybe to take and this is affordable. So that then starts to become towards that end of commercial or accessible. And that's where sometimes I've heard people say to me, I was told my work was too commercial. Like, what does that mean? Or I was told my work isn't commercial enough. And that's where that term gets used a lot in the industry and it can really confuse people. So if someone says to you, your work is too commercial, this is probably what they're saying is that it's too much like what we're seeing in the mainstream at the moment. Um, there's too much of it. Maybe they're looking for something more individual, which if you go in on that sl sliding scale again, could then go towards the fine art end rather than the commercial all of this is grey though, but it's a really interesting concept to think of because there is no right or wrong in this. But the less accessible doesn't mean bad either because sometimes an artist will create an artwork that isn't accessible as such in that we're kind of, you know, it's hard for us to make out what it is. It might be more conceptual. It might be um, let's take Picasso. We kind of understand it now, but years and years and years ago when Picasso was making cubism, you know, that, and still now though, it is difficult for some people to grasp and to get their heads around, you know, cubism is all chopped up, fragmented. We're looking at a nude, but there's all body parts all over the place and we can't quite figure it out. You know, that then is becoming less ac accessible. Um, and so it's always a good idea to have this concept in mind when you are creating your own work. And this is where people sometimes get derailed because they think that they should start creating more commercial, more accessible work because that's easier to sell. That seems to be what everyone wants at the moment. But I've been working with so many artists now over the years and it really comes down to why you want to make art in the first place, because that passion and your individuality and what you bring as an artist is the most important. And I always say that is the non-negotiable part of being an artist. It's your why, your reason for making art and your curiosity and your drive towards what it is that really interests you as an artist. So that is the 100% most important part of this. Then, in that, you can then decide, do you want to make your work more commercial or adapt it? 
So some people, no, I don't care whether it sells. I don't care about making it more sellable. I have a voice. I want to articulate that voice through artwork. Here it is. And that's that. And some people go that way and that's fine. Some people do adapt the work slightly. And this is the negotiable part of being an artist. So your non-negotiable, your why is the reason that you make art. It's who you are. It's your unique DNA that you put into your work. And there is ways then that, that you can adapt the work without taking away from who you are, if that's what you want to do. And for example, ways that you can do that to create more desire for what you have is adapting the work in a physical way. So you might change the scale of the work, for example, to smaller. Maybe you, f you find that smaller pieces are actually going to sell. You might change the way they're presented and framed. It might be that you change the subject matter because you've been given an opportunity to be in a venue where painting wine and the experience of wine tasting is going to fit. So you're not taking away 100% from your place of making, but you realize there is an opportunity here to adapt the work. We've seen this happen quite a lot within our community where people adapt it and change the subject matter or they change parts of the work. And then they've got represented and they've it's been the key. And the reason is because then it's, it's kind of made it accessible. People then understand it like, ah, so, for example, if you're creating artwork uh, in a particular location, so landscapes, figurative, in a, in a location that we can recognize, that then shifts and becomes more accessible because now we have a group of people that go, oh, I know this place or I understand this. If you are down the other end where you're not interested in being commercial, you can still find ways of making your art sellable. It comes then from sharing your story, sharing why you make it, why you're passionate about this type of work, finding a purpose for the work, people who will relate to what you're making in terms of what it is, why you make it. So there's definitely still ways that you can sell without going down that end of really overthinking, you know, if I change it to this and this and this, would it, will it now sell? So then down the other end, of the commercial art and and there are some people that love creating artwork that is trend driven that's now so when i worked in the design team that's what we were making we were making designs that were current that we knew would sell because magazines are talking about it the colors are in fashion right now and people are selling this in other places so when people are changing the color schemes at home, we know that they're looking for mustard, for example, right now. So we are going to create some mustard cushions because we know that this is a color that's trending. And so there are some people that love that, that love that element of creating designs and creating artwork that's really kind of current and moving and evolving. That's okay too. In all of this, it's fine. Whatever you choose to do, whatever end of the scale, it's all about you deciding what you want and where you fit and what excites you about being an artist. So sometimes you'll see in the mass produced stores as well, posted, you know, like poster design, um, there'll be certain trends sometimes where you'll just see certain graphics, certain colors, easily accessible, sometimes just shapes, but people could just quickly hang up on their wall. It's not too deep. It's just, you know, me expressing that I like color. There we go, I'm gonna put that up on the wall, it's easy. And so that's where that comment that came to someone that I feel your work is too commercial, that's where they're edging towards in terms of popularity. It's everywhere. I'm looking for something more individual. Or if someone says to you, your work isn't commercial enough, which again, I've heard um, reiterated back to people, it's them saying that we don't feel that you're down this end enough in terms of being relatable. Now, that could just be in terms of them because context is everything. So if you, if you take an artwork and put it in one of the mass-produced stores, 
then people there relate to it, buy it, because it's their type of customer looking for that type of artwork. I'm looking for something I can just hang up on my wall that fits that place. But take that same artwork and go and put it into a fine art gallery where people are wanting to invest in an artist who's growing and established. That artwork doesn't have the same impact anymore. It's not relatable or commercial in that setting. It is over here, but it isn't over here. So this is something else to bear in mind as well, just to confuse everything even more. Context is everything. And really thinking about that when you see artwork, you change the place of where, where you're putting it and who you're putting it in front of. It can change completely and go back down the other end of the scale. <laughs> um, and so always remembering that that why is your non-negotiable part, I think is the key in all of this. It's about you really getting clear on what type of artist you want to be, what excites you. And then as you develop, thinking about ways that you can connect your artwork to other people, what purpose does it have? This is what we're focusing on in our hub membership this month. We're focusing on our purpose as it relates to our art making and also relates to other people who might buy it or be interested in it. But I hope that helps to explain the differences between commercial. Remember that word accessible. I always find that helpful when I'm looking at artwork as well, when we're thinking about selling in the art market, because accessible is one of the things that I think fits in between the fine art and the commercial. But that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know if you are on social media and you see this link, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next week for another episode.